All right, so now we have successfully deployed our application to our production server and we can start receiving and handling production traffic. Um, but how exactly do we go about uh, pushing out changes to our production server? You know, let's say that uh, a developer on our team uh, either made some code changes or maybe even added a new feature. How do we get those changes that we implemented in our development environment pushed out to our production environment? Well, let's walk through the different steps that's going to be required. So the first thing is I'm going to make a simple code change. So under this dummy route that we have in our index.js file, I'm just going to add a few exclamation points like I've done before. So let's save that. And the first thing that we have to do is we need to push that out to GitHub. All of these changes need to be pushed out to our repository. So let's do a git add dash dash all. And then we do a git commit. We'll commit those changes and then we'll do a git push. All right, so those got pushed out to GitHub. Let's just double check to see if those changes are there. So I'm gonna select the index.js file. And if we take a look at our route, we can see we have the extra exclamation points. All right, so now we have to go to our production server. It looks like I lost connectivity. So let me log back in. Uh, make sure you CD into your app directory. And so here we need to pull in those new changes. So we have to pull in the updated code. So we just do a git pull. And so once you do a git pull, it should update that index.js file. And if I do a cat index.js, we should see those changes take effect. And we can see that here. All right. And so now, because this is our production environment, it's not going to automatically sync our code or anytime our code changes. We don't have NodeMon to restart application. We have to rebuild an image uh, and create brand new containers. So we have a couple of different options. You know, we can do a Docker compose and then down. Uh, and then after that, we do a Docker compose up or we can just do a docker compose up and i prefer just doing a docker compose up because it's a little bit quicker because the system uh, or docker compose will actually delete the container and spin up a new container whereas when we do down it tears everything down and then until we run the up command it's going to keep everything down so when you do down and then up you face a little bit more of an outage so let's do docker compose and then let's pass in our files as usual and then let's do uh up and then dash D. So let's see if this updates our code. All right, and so we could see here, it looks like Docker Compose detected that the Mongo database is already up to date. We don't need to change anything. And that's expected because we didn't change anything with that. Same thing with the Redis, same thing with Nginx. However, for some reason, it did not update our Node app, right? It says it's already up to date. And remember, that's because Docker Compose is very dumb, right? It just checks to see if there's an image named that. It does not know that this image is out of date. So what we have to do is we have to run the same command with the dash dash build. So let's run that. And this should rebuild the image. And then since the image has changed, Docker Compose is going to have to delete the old container and spin up a new node container. And so you can see here, it's now recreating that container because the image changed. And it noticed that, you know, Mongo didn't change once again, Redis didn't change and Nginx didn't change. So uh, if any one of those properties for any of these containers had changed as well, then it would update those as well. All right, so the changes are done. And uh, let's go to our, uh, our Postman and then let's send a request to that route. So let's hit send. And we can see that we got a response back with the extra exclamation points. So we have now successfully pushed out changes to our production server. However, there's a couple of things I didn't like. Uh, so first of all, when you do this up, dash D dash dash build, it's going to check all of your containers, all of your services to see if anything's changed. Now in our application, we know the only thing that's going to be changing whenever we change our source code is going to be our node app container. So is there any way that we can tell Docker Compose to not even bother checking these things? Because, you know, we don't want to accidentally, maybe we put in a typo into our compose file and then we accidentally change uh, some settings in our Mongo database and that causes our Mongo database to go down and then have to get rebuilt and then we suffer an even bigger outage. How can we tell Docker Compose to only rebuild our Node app and then recreate that container? And then here, what we can do is we can specify the service name. So I could just say node app, and that's just going to rebuild our Node app service. So let's test this out and see if this actually works. And so it rebuilt our Node app service, and that's good. So we built that image. However, once again, it went and checked to see if Mongo and uh, as well as our other Redis container, probably somewhere in there, 
needed to be updated. Uh, so why exactly did it check that? Actually, it looks like it just checked for Mongo. So why did it check to see if our Mongo uh, database was up to date? Well, uh, despite the fact that we provided the service here, just as Node app, what happens is if you take a look at our configuration and go to our Docker Compose YAML file, you'll see our Node app is dependent on Mongo. So within Docker Compose, anytime you specify a service and you need to rebuild that service, it has no idea if all of its dependencies changed. And when I say dependencies, I mean under the depends on. So it has to rebuild the Mongo container because it has no idea if the changes will impact Mongo or not. So that's the reason why that's happening. And there's a way around that. What we can do is we can pass in one more flag. We can pass in the dash dash uh, no dash depths. So we're basically saying no dependencies. So we're not going to rebuild that Mongo dependency as well. So if we run this now, you can see that it successfully builds our image and then it rebuilds our container. Uh, and you can see it's already up to date because we didn't make any code changes. So let's test this out one more time. Let's push out some changes. So I'm going to go to my index.js. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to save that. I'm going to do a git add. And then we'll do a git push. Changes have been pushed. Let's do a git pull. And then let's run this same exact command. And let's just hope that only our node container gets rebuilt and recreated. All right, so it recreated our container. And so now if I uh, send a request to that route, we can see that we don't get exclamation points.